We're going to spend the next two class periods talking about the ideal gas law. So I want to start out with the obvious question. What is an ideal gas? An ideal gas is composed of very small particles. An ideal gas has very large distances between the particles so that we can actually ignore the volume of the particles. Ideal gases are in constant random linear motion. Ideal gases experience elastic collisions where they don't lose kinetic energy. The average kinetic energy of an ideal gas is dependent on temperature. And the gas particles do not exert force on each other if they're ideal. They don't attract or repel each other. In other words, an ideal gas follows the kinetic molecular theory. We said earlier that kinetic molecular theory describes the property of gases. More correctly, we can say that kinetic molecular theory describes the ideal properties of gases. Now, there are a number of people studying gases for a long time, and you've seen some of their work in the previous homework and lab assignment. Robert Boyle talked about pressure and volume and how pressure and volume are inversely proportional, so that if you squeeze a balloon and decrease its volume, the pressure goes up. Jacques Charles talked about how volume and temperature are directly proportional, so that if you heat up a balloon, it expands. A lot of these things are pretty intuitive, but the relationships can be treated mathematically. Pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So if you take pressure and multiply it by volume, it equals a constant. In other words, if you increase pressure, you have to decrease volume to maintain the constant. Volume and temperature are directly proportional. So if you divide volume by temperature, it will equal a constant. In other words, if you increase volume, you must increase temperature in order to maintain your constant. And there are a number of gas laws that follow this form. And there's a long history of actually combining gas laws into new forms. So Boyle and Charles' law can actually be smushed together to look something like this, where you keep the inverse proportionality of pressure and volume, but you keep the direct proportionality of volume and temperature. And so there's something called the combined gas law, where you take the initial pressure and volume and divide it by the initial temperature. And that's going to be equal to the final pressure times volume divided by temperature. And the reason that works is because both of these things are equal to the same constant. So we have these gas laws, and there's a tradition of combining them into something bigger. You'll see, however, that when we talk about Boyle and Charles, we have nothing about amount of gases. Remember, there are four things that you can measure. Pressure, volume, temperature, and amount. So none of these gas laws have amount. It's Amadeo Avogadro that introduced the relationship of amount. Now, I don't like dwelling on these old dead white dudes, but I do have to take a moment to recognize Avogadro. That is an amazing portrait. Somebody was paid money to create that portrait of Amadeo Avogadro. And this is the best that person can do. This is the Instagram post that is chock full of filters right here and that's as good as they can make them look. What Avogadro said is that the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the amount of gas. Now, remember, amount of gas means number of particles or moles. So simply stated, if you blow into a balloon, it gets bigger. As you add gas, you increase the volume. We have these statements. Boyle's law, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Charles' law, volume and temperature are directly proportional. And now Avogadro's law, volume and amount are directly proportional. So we're going to follow that tradition of combining gas laws together, but this time we're going to use all the values, pressure, volume, temperature, and amount. So when we smush these three gas laws together, you get a statement like this. Pressure times volume divided by amount times temperature equals a constant. And here's the cool thing. Because I'm using all four values, I'm not leaving anything out. This constant actually has a value. It's just not the mathematical concept of a constant. It's for real a constant. So we assign that constant the letter R. And R refers to the ideal gas constant, or sometimes referred to as the universal gas constant. And R is equal to 0 0.08206. The book says 0 0.0821. I'm giving you an extra significant figure here. And R also has units. The units of R are liters times atmospheres divided by moles times Kelvin. That's a mouthful of units here, but you'll see shortly how those units come in handy. This is the ideal gas law. This is the equation that we're going to be using a lot in both tonight's assignment and tomorrow's, as well as in an upcoming lab activity. It's more often written as PV equals NRT. So when you come down the stairs from the math wing and look at the floor, you'll see this equation at your feet. 
And again, R is a constant with a value. And we'll use the ideal gas law and we'll use the value for R to solve a number of problems. Let's look at one example now. Given 15 grams of chlorine gas at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius and a volume of 12.8 liters, what pressure is being exerted by the gas? Before jumping into the ideal gas law, there are a few things to consider. First, when I say 15 grams of chlorine, we have to remember that chlorine is a diatomic, so that's Cl2. And when you use the ideal gas law, it's not mass that we're using. We're using N, which represents number of moles. So my 15 grams needs to be converted to moles. So for chlorine, one mole is 71 grams. So I get 0.211 moles of chlorine gas in this problem. I also have to remember my units of temperature. When dealing with gases, we always want to be in Kelvin. And if we forget that, we notice that Kelvin are in the units of the ideal gas law, as are moles. So that's a little hint as to what units we should be using. So my 55 degrees Celsius needs to be converted to 328 Kelvin. So now I can use the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. So I'm solving for pressure. So I can say my pressure is going to equal NRT over V. And now I just can plug in my numbers. My moles are 0.211 moles. My ideal gas constant is 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. And my temperature in the correct units is 328 Kelvin. And I'm going to divide that whole thing by my volume, which is 12.8 liters. I can check with my units. My moles cancel out. My Kelvin cancel out. My liters cancel out. And I'm left with atmospheres, which is an appropriate unit for pressure. I plug all of that into my calculator, and I get a pressure of 0.444 atmospheres.